It's the Andy and Dave Daily right here on the Muskegon Channel. Andy O'Reilly, Dave Cackley. Happy Monday. Yay! Very excited about the fact we're back together on a Monday. I had a bit of a perilous weekend. I had to do some leaves. What uh, a little sore from blowing leaves and yard work. I'm, I was pretty sure I was born to Irish royalty and switched at birth. And <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this because raking leaves is just not my thing. Right. Um, and then you have a leaf blower? Uh, you, you, your weekend? My, my, I want to get back to your 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 leaf raking uh, a predicament. Okay, did yeah. you have well, a leaf? Like to know about you, that. I would assume I would assume you would have a leaf blower. Well, we do. We have a very nice leaf blower. Okay, okay. So you didn't have to rake anything. You just had to blow leaves, right? Well, but it's it's ten amount of raking because there's the big thing. No, that it's you not even boom, close to the same like thing. As, with, oh come on! It's just a, it's just a different. Oh my It's the God. same motion, just a different kind of. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, shut it's up. just different mechanics to the, the motion. That's all. Come on, you've seen the lazy. Can remember the, the the commercial with the fat kid who's calling his grandma to get a grape soda? You remember that? You've seen that commercial, yeah. right? Okay. Anyway, the, it's the same kid during the fall. He's sitting in a chair with a leaf blower and, and blowing leaves. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it's there's nothing there's nothing to. I'm I a almost, man of action. I almost you see. felt bad for you no, until you, you said you had the leaf blower. If you're raking, no. that's different. It, well, it, I I need your pity today. Okay, fine. It's, and, okay, and, a, no. and a rub. Can you come out? <laughs> no, there will be no rubbing of of Andy by by these hands. No, but no. What was the next Can, thing? Could you use your creepy little somewhat? How do you turn your fingers inside out when you do that? Yeah, about, you can. Your fingers go backwards, hands, which is just really weird. Um, these anyway, are man hands. Look at those. Yeah, those are not man hands. Those are creepy. Man hands. These are man. Ugh, rat claws. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to lead with a funny story. Well, it's not necessarily a funny story. It's more of a tra tragic story, to be honest with you. Okay. Because last night uh, we did our Sunday night thing. We caught an episode of um, Stranger Things. And then after okay. that, we switched over to the Andy Griffith Show on the Netflix there. That's an interesting um, well, That's just our little Sunday night thing. We like Andy Griffith okay. on Sunday night, so we watched that. And it was one of the episodes with uh, Denver Pyle. Remember, oh, really? Uncle yeah, Jesse the, was the on Uncle for Jesse a few episodes. He was in. The, he he played the father of that that uh, bluegrass family that lived up in the mountains. And, okay, I've and I'm going to give you the whole that. story. But then okay. you remember Denver Pyle went yes. on to be Mad Jack in Grizzly uh -huh. Adams, right? And then and then he Uncle went on Jesse. to be Uncle Jesse. Mm -hmm. Nice career in in Dukes of Hazard, mm -hmm. and then he went on to play. Uh, I think one of the last big roles that he did was Maverick in 1994. He made an appearance with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover and Maverick. Right, in that movie. That was, yes. That's yep, right. he was in that. And then he did, uh, the last thing he was credited for was a Dukes of Hazzard reunion show. Do you know that Denver Pyle is buried in an unmarked grave somewhere down in Texas? What? Can you believe that? That is a, why? Unmarked why it, grave. Why? Uh, next, to his, next to his second wife's uh, parents. I, wow. Denver Pyle, unmarked grave. So you can't even go see it because it's unmarked. You don't know. Yep. Is this Denver, Denver Pyle? Oh, no, it's a different unmarked grave. We don't know, yeah. Wow. He just buried in an unmarked grave down in Texas. Oh, Somebody ought to do no. something about that. But, but, but you got magic marker. Here lies Denver Pyle, I, it, Uncle Jesse. I mean, the guy was a great actor, and he was really, I mean, even just a headstone, something small. Don't you think? I, I you know what? I I have I do I have zero care about how you dispose of my remains once right. I'm gone. I don't okay. really. I think we over we we overemphasize uh, headstones and and the things of somebody who isn't even there anymore. They're not there. Okay. Yeah. No. That's their remains. That's not right. them anymore. So. Right. I think we get a little carried away with. That's why that you you hear these commercials for like funerals and funeral costs. I'm like. No, no. I agree with that. Spend but that kind of money on a something. It's ridiculous. I, I don't really. I, I, I see. I enjoyed the first part of your story talking about Uncle Jesse and his, yeah. uh, you know, his his uh, lauded career. And uh, then I, I was sad when you said on Mark Grave, and then I realized, yeah. well, Uncle Jesse doesn't care at this point. Well, I get it, but <laughs> he doesn't. I, just, I thought he should. Deserved a grave marker of some sort. Uh, like I said, if, if you feel if you feel the need, magic marker. Just start, you know, mark. You know, although some people may call that sacrilegious or something. I'd like to, see, you know, what I'd like to see. I'd like to see a statue of him with that walkie-talkie thing. Boys, <laughs> he's gonna get. He's coming Shepherd at you. <laughs> Shepherd the lost sheep. Shepherd the lost right. sheep. You got your ears on. Oh. Denver Pile, man. Here lies the shepherd. That's right.
because he was the shepherd. Absolutely. Why don't you uh, yeah, surprise us right. with some news here? All right, let's get into it. U.S. and North Korea preparing for another round of high-level nuclear talks this week. Pyongyang has been ramping up the rhetoric a bit. An official with their foreign ministry said they could restart their nuclear forces if the U.S. does not ease up on sanctions. It's just a little pre-negotiation trash talk. No need to worry about North Korea. You worry about Iran. Keep your eyes on Iran. They could blow you up. North Korea wants to stay alive. Iran's got you got factions in there that uh, uh, want uh, want the jihad and and want it at all costs. So uh, that's what you worry about. North Korea, I don't even raise an eyebrow to anymore. Okay, silly. There you go. There's a little editorial commentary. Thank you. You got anything to add? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Oh, because I wanted well, I wanted you to do that so I could get. Now I already did two sniffs of that. Can't. Yeah. Well, you better lay off, off that. that. I should. Absolutely. An increasing problem. Yeah. Uh, speaking of problems, great segue. Despite the opioid crisis, the FDA has approved a new opioid medication. Desuvia is a tablet in a single dose uh, pre-filled ap- applicator to be administered under the tongue to patients in hospitals, emergency rooms, and surgical centers. Of course, it wouldn't be administered anywhere else. I mean, it's right, not no. going to find its way onto the street or Never. into somebody. No, no, that, will, that won't happen. It's five to ten times more powerful than fentanyl. Uh, once again, only to be administered by sure. professionals. Yeah, no. <laughs> Great idea. FDA. I, I shared uh, that yesterday on Facebook when I saw the Vicodin, headline come out Vicodin about isn't, it. Vicodin isn't strong enough. Yeah. For those yeah, who we, can't get we, high we, enough we off We need Vicodin more high-powered more. pills that are pushed through Jesus. by pharmaceutical, <laughs> pharmaceutical oh, special interests. And oh, ran through man. clear by the FDA. That's quickly. That's what we need. Let's let's just fast track this right through. And you know yeah. what, dude? I'm I'm against. I'm not against people that are suffering with pain. Right, some need people. Need I'm not against it. I really am. Right, but good God, if you're in a surgical center or a hospital or something like that, you're gonna. Chances are you're gonna have an IV in you already. Mm-hmm. You're telling yeah. me you need a pill to to complement right. that. The pain on, is still man. too much. This pain is still too much. I don't. You know, and and like you were saying, I get that too. I get that there are people who have you know whatever condition they have. Yep. That needs to be medicated. I get that. Nobody's Fair. saying don't, but uh, it, there aren't as many of them are that are actually on it. Most of them don't need to be, I probably. Uh, and something like this, Jesus, do you think we got problems now? I know. Holy balls. Yep. Anyway, uh, Muskegon area regional high school football playoff pairings are set. Amona Shore is advancing. They're going to take on Portage Northern. That's at 7 p.m. on Friday in Division Two, Division Six. Montague travels to Schoolcraft on Saturday. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff. And the Big Reds, the Big Red Machine, the Muskegon team, they take on Cedar Springs at Grand Haven. Oh boy. That will be a Friday night, a 7 o'clock kickoff for that. So, uh I felt not uh, dominating like I thought they would, but they're still, I mean, it's still the odds on favorite. I felt really bad for my friend Scott on Friday night because he's a Jenison guy, you know, with his kids, they all went to Jenison. You remember my friend Scott that stopped in at the radio station? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he comes in, you know, and, hey, we're coming out uh, Friday. We're going to be tailgating in front of the Jenison Mona Shores game and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Uh, "Uh, I'm going to be working. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) And then they get, what, they get six? Uh, something like that. Yeah, it's just, that's like, dude, sorry. Mm. Wish I could have been there. Man, yeah, but, mm. well, you, somebody's got really. to make the money, you know? Well, when we were working, we were setting up the uh, the big red carpet live thing for the, uh, the the Hope Project, which was cool. Right. Yeah, so. Nice. Sorry Good I couldn't make you. it, man. All right, both Michigan and Michigan State win and win big over the weekend. Michigan pounds Penn State into oblivion. Hammering the 14th ranked Nittany Lions 42 to seven at the Big House. Sparty beats up on Maryland at College Park 24 to three. Michigan now ranked number four in the polls. They're four. probably going to be in to the uh, college football playoff rankings, uh, which come out tomorrow. Once again, name one player on Michigan right now. One, just uh, one. Bart Starr. Oh Jesus. Michigan State back in the top 25, coming in at number 24. Lines, of course, falling at Minnesota, 24 to 9. 
Okay. Don't even pretend to enjoy Michigan's rise because you don't care. So stop. Yeah. See, I, this is what I've said this before. You're the Michigan fan that irritates me. The one who doesn't really care that just wants to stick it in there a little bit. That's right. Stick it in there a little bit, which is fine. That's Four. par for that's par for Andy's course. Quattro. There you go. Uh huh. Quattro. Yeah, go. Yeah. Qua. I, I, I'm French. sorry. Only I, I'm sorry. I only speak. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Go enjoy your Monday. See ya.